It's October the 13th, 2015. I'm Dana Dernford, also known as nuclearproctologist.org. And you can find my videos and these Fukushima presentations at Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube. This is episode one. And so episodes, each of these episodes are meant to tell the story. And so the whole story in these episodes is coming out. And yesterday, the pilot episode, we covered Unit 1, Unit 2, and the common spent fuel pools. Today's unit, uh, finish off Unit 2. Girl Boy Dean on YouTube. And we are streaming live. This is episode 1. And we are streaming live. And I just froze on my end. And that's okay, too. I'm going to close down that other one. And so uh, each of these episodes are an hour long, and then there's an hour and a half questions and answers after, thereabouts, depending. You know, we get lots of questions, pertinent and important questions that we didn't cover concerning today's show. And so each day is a different show. Tomorrow's show is about the jet stream on, on the 14th of October, and the 15th of October is about the Pacific Ocean. And so by the time we get 10 to 15 episodes in, it's an extraordinary documentation of Fukushima told factually and with the documentation like you see behind me supplied for you the entire way through. I think it's a very good thing. And so the chat room is going, flying. I am recording the comments and the video and just in case Google rips us off and don't put all the video up, I'll chop out the section that's missing and repost it. But also I want to be able to try to get through the comments. And I know yesterday's seven, eight, nine hundred comments or something. And the comments do not show up after the video has rendered and come back up. And so that's why I have to do what I'm doing. So it's a little bit extra work or a lot of extra work and that's fine too. And so yesterday we covered the meltdown, melt throughs, melt outs of unit one and unit two and also the spent fuel pool in Japan and so today we'll pick up at unit 2 and finish out those headlines uh, and so uh, yesterday and we'll just start at the beginning of this folder and we'll be finished that one all of the reactors fuel may have melted and I gotta keep my eye on the comment section which is over here sometimes just in case my audio goes missing or the stream stops the, the hounds and everybody else in the chat room. And you know, I'll come in after one hour show and we'll talk to everybody, say hi to everybody. And right now I'm saying hi to everybody. But this, uh, these episodes are very important, so we'll get right into it. Expert conclude no nuclear fuel is left inside the Fukushima reactors. Now we covered this particular headline yesterday. And so number five, you can see they looked at it with this mirror on this highly technical uh, technique and this is unit 2 over here and so unit 2 they that little square inside that circle is what they're talking about just for context for you and so there's no fuel in number 2 there's, there's not a number 1 either we covered that yesterday dramatically simply impossible to remove melted fuel from Fukushima and the corium which is the melted down reactor itself has spread all over and could have gone through the floor of the containment vessel. Now we know the containment vessel was cracked and had holes through it and that the earthquake broke these buildings as the pilot show we covered. And so if you really want to learn about Fukushima, these episodes, the pilot show, this one here, is designed to really give you a comprehensive um, understanding of each section of it with just the data, with just the headlines and the pictures and diagrams that are available. And, but yesterday's live stream, we had 26 thumbs down before the stream was over. And we had another five since then in 800 views. And so the nuclear industry, and we're going to do episodes on the nuclear industry and the PR firms and how maniacal these people actually are and dement it and twist it uh, later in the programs of these episodes. So they say the only way to deal with these reactors releasing dangerous radiation is to cover it in cement. Now that's what they've done in Chernobyl, but you can't actually do that because they're still in chain reactions. And Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. Chernobyl was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. You still can't sell the land in, in huge swaths of UK, Europe, including Ireland, Scotland, 
and UK itself. And you can shrink the mercury to meet there 28 years later. And so the assertions that no radiation could make it to North America through the PR firms and your medias, which is PR firms, is why we exist because the lies have to come to a stop and people have to understand that you know you, you can't cover these reactors you have to stay on that site and try to save the planet that's how bad this is we've already killed the pacific ocean and we'll do uh in two days time we'll be doing the pacific ocean the big question is where did fukushima's melted fuel go june 23rd 2015 no one even knows where it is the world's never seen anything like this we have three nuclear cores that hit the groundwater and they left the buildings Chernobyl stayed in the building. Uh, and so, this headline you see is a direct result of Dana and the Hounds of Fukushima. That we have pummeled the opposition, which is nothing but lies and conjectures, and certainly lies, and lies and more lies about potatoes and bananas, and walking in sunshine, and getting on airplanes and dental x-rays, in the context of a nuclear accident. The, anybody that says that is just... Uh, they have no moral standard whatsoever, let's put it that way. And so you can see all the headlines at the bottom of each of these story: AP, Shimbu, Mancini, and I mean uh, South China Morning. The world has never seen a case like Fukushima where nuclear fuel melted and fell through. Right? Chernobyl stopped turned to an elephant's foot after 10 days. But still, once again, that's 400 Hiroshima bombs throughout Europe. European countries. Devastating. But the industry hit it really well. You got to think about how much money and the people that work for the industry are probably the most demented ones out there. Closing Fitzpatrick nuclear plant. This was uh, yesterday's headline I think. Uh, going to cost CNY an estimated $500 million a year. They're going to lose $500 million a year in that community and so they will lie and attack me endlessly if I was to come out and talk about why they should close that plant. Because these people are making enormous amounts of money at their jobs. Uh, they're making, average is 120000 a year, it's not counting the benefits. Trust me, it's not counting the benefits and counting the overtime and counting everything else. That's their wages. But the average worker anywhere else is getting 48000 a year, 17% below the state average. But all nuclear plants, just that one plant, the payroll is $74 million. There's a billion dollars for secure, security, so the terrorists don't get it. But if they release it in your community, it doesn't matter. It's like a banana or a potato chip. But if a terrorist gets at it, you got to give up all your freedom and give them extra billions of dollars. Yeah? They have to dig up mountains just to get their hands on this stuff. It's the most carbon-intensive thing on the planet, but yet they're, they're claiming that it's carbon-free. Just like they claim it's bananas and potato chips. Uh, let's keep going back on to what we're supposed to be doing here. I just done that for context for you, so you can understand what what's at stake for these people. They couldn't get a job serving French fries, but they can get one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year murdering you and your loved ones in this entire planet. And they like it. Trust me. Official fear: melted reactor fuel is now exposed. And so, for context, for people that are not familiar with the reactors, this is unit one, right quick. This is unit two that we're talking about. No, well, that's not unit two, Dana. That's unit three. Well, oh, unit four. We'll get that in a second. That's unit two. That's a hundred percent meltdown, melt through, melt out on top, and all the fuel is missing, like I was just showing you earlier. Uh, this is unit three coming up. Hundred percent meltdown, melt through, melt out. Are the cores exposed? Yeah. Are the fuel rods exposed? Yeah. Of course they are. But they say they may be over and over, and you'll see that all in these headlines coming up anyway. This is Unit 4, and inside of it, they claim, these are the official pictures, all of it. And they claim that fuel pole is inside of that building in order to deceive you and trick you and manipulate you, and so you can't have a conversation with anybody. Because they don't look at the building behind it, all they see is this shiny structure. And so that's why, that's why what we're doing is so important for the people that are trying to understand it, or the people that, hang on, I missed that one. I gotta move that over so you can see what I'm doing coming up here. And back to the headlines. Not that one. That one. So official sphere to melt the fuel is now exposed. But I mean the pictures and the headlines yesterday, of course, on unit one and two, 
It shows all of that to be constant, always exposed. Experts struggling to find a condition of nuclear cores. Not even known for all three reactors. That's June the 10th, 2014. I think there's one more headline here. A U.S. expert Fukushima melted fuel uh, concern for millennia. Risk of criticality from Corian moving. That's the melted core. That's the melted reactor. It's called a Corium. From the melted, what you should say, the melted reactor moving, redistributing. TEPCO's chief, certainly a dif difficult path ahead. We'll have to pretend bananas and potato chips are actually nuclear waste for decades until people go to sleep. We'll be able to move forward. We can find the damaged fuel. No, you can't. You don't have the technology to do anything with the fuel. You can't move forward. You, you can't. All you're bringing in is the homeless to work on everything. You're not bringing in Harvard. You're not bringing in Yale. You're not bringing in Stanford. You're not bringing in Oxford. You're not bringing in MIT. Right? So how are you going to fix anything when all you bring in is the homeless? You think I'm kidding? Once again, let me play that clip. This is just a tiny, tiny... Result. If a problem later occurs, they can say, well, the people on site, the workers made their own arbitrary decision to do this. It's not our fault. Another example, immediately after the first hydrogen explosion, TEPCO gave out an order uh, to, or uh, a request uh, to all of these um, uh, dispatching, labor dispatching companies, and they said, send us people who don't mind dying. At that time, uh, it was really very much a panic situation, perhaps, but... Oh, I didn't finish that. I was going to come in and say hi to Pink. Hi, Pink! We'll go back to that headline now. I finished that... That video um, normally, when you enter any area where there might be possible uh, radiation exposure, you're always supposed to be issued a special uh, kind of uh, booklet. Or, or that, uh... And that was Pink Sapphire I was talking to, by the way. Anybody that's watching this later don't know what's going on. Okay, so that's the headlines for Unit 2. We covered all that yesterday. Now, other, and so let's go to Unit 3 and start right away on Unit 3, rather. And just for context, I'm going to bring up a picture of Unit 3. Just in case you're confused and don't understand what it looks like. That's that pretty little thing up there in the corner. That's Unit 3. That's 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. I don't need to show you headlines for you to comprehend that, do I? Okay, well, I will anyway, just in case. Reactor 3 exploded a second time 24 hours later. UN. Then wind and rain brought high levels of radiation over Tokyo, Sendai, and Nagagno. Now it also brought it all the way across North America because the jet streams and the ocean currents are real. But the jet streams get here in three or four days. And so it blanketed not only Japan because the winds all come across the Pacific. So is the ocean current. But it will linger over Japan too. Don't get me wrong. Possibility that the radiation from the MOX fuel in the reactor a combination of uranium and plutonium could be released. Possibility. Make sure I'm under, I got that streaming for everybody, okay. Unit 3 mox likely melted through. Mix uranium, plutonium oxide. So mixed oxide fuel is what they really call it. May have dribbled. May have dribbled. Out after melting again. Dribbled. Dribbled, they say. I got to show you another. Dribbled. How can you say something inside of this building is only going to dribble? What kind of world do we live in when people say that? Well, we live in a world of nuclear PR firms. And where they minimize and they distort everything about the accidents. And so it, it is the biggest problem we got. I mean, the headlines are here. August 9, 2011, melted through. But the media is still after telling people that is no worse than a banana or a potato chip. They can't switch it off. They can't stop. And they have to do it all the time. They do it all the time to everybody. There's no trust anymore whatsoever any, in any media. There's not a journalist out there I can trust. There's not one out there will tell you the truth without injecting the hooey of the nuclear industry, the lies and the manipulations. Most of the fuel at reactor number three may have breached the vessel after melting down twice. It's not like it ever stopped. But these are just the headlines, August 8, 2011. Most of the fuel may have breached the vessel after melting down. No. When it blew up, it ejected all the fuel rods completely out of it because they're around the roof and there ain't no roof there anymore. 
You know, these pictures were known to all these people, and they chose to tell you, you know, in terrible interpretations without showing you the picture. Why show you the picture when we can tell you a lie? If we show you a picture, we can't tell you that lie. If we say, it's okay, then you look at the picture, you're like, well, you know, I don't think so. I don't know if I want to trust you anymore. And they're like, please, trust me. That's what these people are like, where they won't show you the evidence, they'll just tell you a conjecture, and then everybody repeats it. Because everybody wants to put their faith in the media. Nobody wants to believe that the media is demented. But it truly is. Because every time it talks about it, and I mean, I got prime examples of the whip accident. And just let me see if I can find that very quick. Um, here, whippy. Whip it good. And so sometimes I got too much on my computer. Just give me one moment, though. We're probably not going to find it. Inside of Fukushima. Uh, hang on a second. Here's Miles O'Brien um, and he's going to say he's inside a unit four. I think I should play this Part one. of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less. So, you know, I got less than a check x-ray. At a nuclear plant, you ingest an atom, you get an autoimmune or a cancer down the road. And there's 1,800 of them. But he, that, that's the building that he said he's in, and he says it's inside of this building. It's the most ludic ludicrous things imaginable. So he's lying to you, 100%. He's fabricating it to sell you the story. And so when I talk to people, people will say, well, Dana, he was in there, Dana. He was in Unit 4. They're taking the fuel out. Now I've had people do it to me over and over and over. But that's why Unit 4 looks like behind me. You can't put that in there. It's not there at Chernobyl. You can't get into these buildings. Nobody's in there. But here's Miles O'Brien saying he's inside of it. But I'm showing. I'm going to be showing you these headlines that there's nothing there that it caught fire, it blew up. But I'm, you know, all you need is that picture, don't you? Do you need anything else to know that that is not true? Really, you know what I'm saying. But this is what they're doing to us, and it has to end. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. Massive free melting occurring at reactor three. That's right alongside of it. Two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. LA Times speculation is supercritical fission event occurred at Fukushima reactor irradiating plutonium. Plutonium is man-made. And plutonium will burn at a couple of hundred thousand times hotter than the rest of the elements. The uranium is mostly uranium. The byproducts is the cesiums, the strontiums, the americiums, the neptuniums. Blah, blah, blah. The 2,000 we know about, the 10,000 that are classified. And all of these will give you cancer. All of these will mutate fruit flies. Bananas can't. Potatoes can't mutate a fruit fly. They're not going to give you cancers. They're not going to give you Alzheimer's, dementia, diabetes, lung issues, respiratory. And we know that, we know that, once again, let me remind everybody who's not familiar of how we know that you know, you've never heard of these studies unless you see it here about Dr. Raymond Gilmitty from Loveless Respiratory Research, L-O-V-E-L-A-C-E. And he's got a, a huge credentials and 94 peer review academic studies on beagle dogs and beagle puppies. And just one of his studies, tumors of the lung, skeleton, and liver occurred beginning about three years after exposure. And lung tumors were found in 46 dogs were the second most common. Uh, bone tumors in 93 dogs were the most common cause. Liver tumors were found in 20 dogs. Uh, and tumors in these three organs often occurred in the same animals. And they were breeding a lot less radiation than what I'm talking about. And he killed these dogs for 35 years. They're still doing it in New Mexico. But all the studies you hear referred to was a one-minute exposure. And uh, MIT had told us about that, but let's, um, while we're at it, here's, here's Whip apologizing with all the typical rhetoric you've been hearing for seven years, but when Whip had a major release, a huge release, they rolled out the PR firms, which is your media, and here's the lies 
And it's about a minute alignment. He played these laws over and over and over and over coming at you. And I got him together in a one minute clip. And he even attacked me. At the end of it, there's a clip of where they're attacking me. And I'm telling you the truth in that little clip. But they demonized me. I responded to him a while back. But I'm going to play that whole minute for you. Here we go. First known release of radiation from the underground site on February 14th is very serious, but they insist that the radiation levels detected in and around the plant in the last 10 days are no riskier than a dental x-ray or an airline flight. They say so far the radiation levels detected are no more risky than a dental x-ray or an airline flight. No danger to human health or the environment. The average person in the U.S. gets exposed to more than 600 millirims every year from naturally occurring radiation. They consider this radiation release not at all a danger. No danger to human health or the environment. WIP scientists say radiation levels are far below some of those in our everyday lives, like from medical x-rays and natural sources. Most people will get more radiation exposure from eating bananas than they ever will from this New Mexico repository site. More than 200 people were at a meeting in Carlsbad last night concerned about the radiation release at WIP. I charge my iPhone every single night. I charge my iPad every single night. I touch that cord, that cord, I don't feel a thing. If I lift that cord, it wouldn't hurt me. That's what officials are saying. DOE, they will continue to monitor the levels on a constant basis. The whip leak has spawned a new wave so of So the winds conspiracy. are going to switch and change, and it's going to blow back. Uh, evaporation is going to liberate it. It's going to get into the water, into all your friends. Dope. First known release of radio. Dope. And so they just told you all the lies. For every accident, this is what they roll out. But if a terrorist gets it, then they got to storm your community and they got to seize everything you got in your community and they got to harass you in your community. They got to have every nuclear facility got to have millions of dollars of security, billions of dollars of security every year in order to maintain their idiocracy. And this is about free money for them. There ain't no terrorists. They're the terrorists. Okay, uh, let's get, keep going on the headlines. Neutron sources found one mile from Fukushima plant after 3.11. Some fuel may be may have been injected from the spent fuel pool. Do you think that the fuel pools that are missing and that atomized and aerosol and that billing three behind me, right that one here, do you think that it was ejected out of that? Well, you'd be right. But you won't hear those headlines very often, but there they are. January the 16th, 2013. And so, you know, we do believe based on the information from TEPCO. Now, these emails, there's a couple of million of them below my video. There's a link to the official site. And you can go through the emails in chronological order. And there's 2,000 pictures below my videos here. So you can go through them and see the reactors yourself taken by the Fukushima 50. And there's probably thousands of these 50s. They were used up and thrown away like toilet paper. Nuclear chain reaction may have lasted over seven months at Fukushima. Chernobyl lasted 10 days. Chernobyl was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. Chernobyl was one third the size. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl, once again, stopped after 10 days. Chernobyl, he sent in a million people. Chernobyl, he snatched people off the streets in Chernobyl to go into Chernobyl. And Chernobyl was one third the size. Let me see if I can find that clip for everybody. I got a feeling tomorrow will be unit four <laughs> by the time this show is. We're only doing one hour shows, half an hour questions and answers. Here you go. Yeah, that's the one. Sure, nobody snatched people off the street. Here, listen to this. When the robots broke down because of the extreme radioactivity, men were sent in to clean up the site. They were not volunteers. They were picked up off the streets and press ganged onto the roof. When the road my goodness right you know but it's like a banana or a potato chip if you go to the media like i showed you earlier right it's like walking in sunshine it's like licking that iphone charger we mocked her for a couple of months straight every show we mocked her i was pretending i was licking an iphone charger because it's outrageous 
And then they used me to try to demonize me because I was the only one that come out and articulated what was going to happen and what, how it was going to play out at WIP. And I was right. Everything I said came true. Every single sentence came true, didn't it? Every single one of them. Exactly what I said they were going to do. And they could never get down in the mind <laughs> till they done this and done that. <clears throat> I mean, they evacuated WIP because of a truck fire. Right, two weeks later, they admitted that there was a radiation release. No one was back, back down in the morning since the truck fire. So they hit it up, and then they come out and lie to you over and over and over and over and over, like the video I showed you earlier. Bananas, licking iPhone chargers, walking in sunshine, x-rays, getting on an airplane. You can't trust them. You can't, you can't support them. You can't use their uh, venues because they're just filthy people. They're disgusting animals. They got a job working at the TV stations on top of that so they can lie to you because they know what they're doing. They got the accolades, the degrees, the merits to go do that, to be outrageous lawyers. Nuclear chain reaction may have lasted over seven months. So Chernobyl was equal to 10 Hiroshima bombs and over 10 days, right? 400 Hiroshima bombs over 10 days. So three sevens, 210 days. So... So 21 times uh, 400 Hiroshima bombs is 8,400 Hiroshima bombs. But each of the reactors, if you compare Japan's reactor, but each reactor is three times the size. So times three is 25,000 Hiroshima bombs. And each reactor was 100% meltdown in Japan. Chernobyl was a 30%. So times three again. So times three. 75,000 Hiroshima bombs. And so, you know what I'm saying? The comparisons, and then you got three 100% meltdowns times three in Japan where Chernobyl was only one. And then you got all that time that's gone by. Now, that's not counting the spent fuel pools that we talk about all the time. Nuclear chain reaction may have lasted over seven months. That's what that means. But the chain reaction didn't stop. It didn't stop at seven months. It's still going on four and a half years later. So 225,000 Hiroshima bombs. That's just being polite and using the model they used. The real model, because they were using mixed oxide, plutonium, uranium combinations reclaimed from nuclear missiles that have been already through a chain reaction were already two million times worse. And when you put them through the chain reaction again, they're two million times again. So originally, you can probably pick them up. Once you went through the chain reaction, they're two million times worse. You can't get near of it. A pound of it will kill everybody in the front row of a theater in a minute and everybody in the theater in 20 minutes. A pound of it. Now, if you took that pound and put it through a chain reaction again, it's two million times worse. But that pound, after it went through a chain reaction, I know like Rod Adams at Atomic Insight says, oh, you took fuel rods and took, took a little torch and tried to light it. You don't pick up a fuel rod. That's a rod before it went through the chain reaction. But if they tried that with a rod that went through a chain reaction, they wouldn't be telling you any stories because <laughs> their body would be on a nuclear waste site. That's how this stuff works, see? But that's the lie. That's the game. That's the hoodwink that they got on you for 70 years. They're really good at it. And, and they, they do this because they make money on the nuclear industry. They couldn't get a job anywhere else. And they make a lot of money. And the bank will give them anything they want. Whatever they want. Oh, you work for the nuclear power plant. What do you want? I'll give it to you. Top government official, MOX fuel could be neutron source. So the mixed oxide fuel is what I was just talking about. Just to get you up to speed, right? Um, only some of the Fukushima melted fuel is now solid. That's TV. January 29, 2015, molten core remelts even with enough cooling water. And the Fukushima accident was the first of its kind. In comparison, like Chernobyl was a candle. Just a little candle. One of those little cheap $1 candle that burns out in about 40 minutes. That's what Chernobyl was in any kind of comparison to Fukushima. There is no comparison. Outside of, it's a, it, that's the only model we got, really got to work with. Any, you know what I'm saying? You can't sell the land in UK because it's Chernobyl, but don't worry about Fukushima and the jet streams come straight here. Straight here. 
The Japanese used to fly balloons with bombs on it over here. Right? Remember that? Think about it. Look up fire bomb on Wikipedia. Not that you can trust everything on Wikipedia, but it does mention the story. Melted fuel in reactor three appeared to have burned through the pressure vessel loaded with rods containing plutonium that was reclaimed from the nuclear missiles and was already two million times worse than the original one and is now two billion times worse. Number three was two million reactors, the animosity equivalent, in, in danger. It's cannibalizing all the rocks to steal all the rebar in the chain reaction. So then anything that falls down on top of it, including water, becomes ionized and radiated and released back into the environment. That's a good way to look at it because that's exactly how it works. 76 trillion becquels of plutonium-239 released from Fukushima. That's 76 trillion cancers. That's how you look at that. 76 trillion cancers if you can distribute it out. 23,000 times higher than previously announced. That's unit three. And we're halfway through the show and we haven't, we still got quite a ways to go to get through the material we're supposed to get through today, so we better keep moving. Uh, Fukushima number three is long vertical cracks down the side of the reactor vessels. Long vertical cracks, March the 25th, 2011. That's game over. But they continue to lie till today, even today. Number three, MOX fuel rods have spread out surrounding areas contaminated with plutonium. You can never return to this area. Let's look at number three again. Is that or is that not devastating? Let me bring up a, a cleaner picture. Maybe I got a better picture on my desktop right at my fingertip. Hard to say with me sometimes. I got too much. And the only way to get over there yeah, unit three. Hang on, we'll find a good one for you right quick here. Maybe not. Make a lawyer to me. Okay. Well, just let me hit on these headlines. Is government trying to contaminate every region of Japan by burning radioactive debris? If everyone is contaminated in a relative, relative sense, nobody is. 300 times more radiation released into the atmosphere from burning debris... So they're, they're digging up all this debris, they're bagging it all up, and then, let me give you a picture, and they're bagging it all up, and when people are not looking, trucks are coming in and moving it to other prefectures throughout Japan and burning it in the incinerators. This stuff should be in a nuclear waste site till the end of our solar system, and instead they're burning it. And so if you know anything about Trans-Pacific pollution, I'll just touch on that for a second, if I can find it, who knows with me. Some days they're diamonds, some days they're not. And so when you burn it, Trans-Pacific, we know it brings over the mineral dust. Um, here's another good one for you. Radioactive plume contamin contaminated the entire northern hemisphere during a relatively short period of time. Well, forest fires travel that same route, right? The Trans-Pacific air pollution is well known. It's a well-known corridor, anyway. And these radioactive substances were carried straight up and in the jet stream whisked them right across to us. Let's keep going. And I'll close that because otherwise I'll digress. So, yeah, it found its way, and that whole area, I mean, it blew up and distributed throughout that whole area. Sorry. Yeah, we already covered that one. So number three spent fuel pool at over a million times normal generated during nuclear fission. So the pool had went into its own chain reaction. This is not a campfire where you throw water over it. It is a campfire where you throw water over it and it keeps relighting itself over and over and over and over and over because it never went out. You can't put it out. That's the problem. We don't have the technology. But but that why that's why we gotta we gotta rally. That's why we gotta come to a consensus that there is an issue. You know, the first the first thing we got to do is, is admit there's an issue. And while we're talking about bananas and potato chips and walking in the sunshine and lying and manipulating just everybody constantly in every venue out there, how can we have a conversation? How can we ever find a way forward? How can we ever have a future? How can we ever have peace? How can we even have comfort in knowing we... How can we pretend we got a future when this is 
the worst thing imaginable, and they won't tell anybody. They'll, they'll just keep downplaying it for corporations, for an ideology of nuclear. They have to lie about every aspect of nuclear. They say it's carbon-free, but they dig up thousands of mountains. It takes uh, decades to build a plant. The list is endless. The pollution is released into the community, into the ocean, is dumped in our landfills. And I mean, if you don't really understand that part, underground fire outside of St. Louis it burned since 2010 near a nuclear waste dump. And so they got disaster is to move the whole community. And the precedence has been done before with this stuff, where they did move whole communities. In case a landfill fire hits a nuclear waste, it's a thousand feet away. At some point, that's going to turn into a chain reaction, and you got to melt it. And now, in that spot, there's around 6,700 tons of plutonium, right? And uh, Yoshi Shimatsu was covering that in uh, the Jeff Rince's radio show last night. I was there. They couldn't get me on the normal system. I had to... I ended up having to phone in. Uh, they got hold of me, then I phoned them in on the other line. But they couldn't get me on the normal phone system. My number wouldn't go through for them. And so this is constant with me anyway. I'm always demonized. I'm always uh, being attacked. And I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm, I don't lie. I show you all the documentation. And these uh, episodes, you know, if the industry wants to... to, to to say Dana is wrong, here's my here's my case that I'm arguing in these episodes. Each of these episodes is the case. So this is not like a comedy show. This is not like a sitcom. This is a show meant to help everybody that's trying to learn or willing to learn or understands that they have to learn and that they need the very basis of the whole broken system in order to, to, to learn is the problem. And they need the data. Who's going to go out and get all the data that I got? Who's going to go out and do the things I've done? Who's going to come out here and, and put it into context like I do? Tell me, for goodness sakes, please. I really want to find that person. I'm so tired of doing it myself. But I'm only doing it because we got to. We got no choice. Uh, and I'll come over to this one after. That's my site, thenuclearproctologist.org. And I'll break that down in uh, 20 minutes' time. When the show is over, we'll do a half an hour questions and answers or just chats. And because I love the people that are paying attention, the chat room, you know, I need support too. And so that's, you know, we enhance each other synergistically. Iodine 131 in no, number three spent fuel pull at over a million times normal. But there's 10 times iodine-132 there. For every iodine-131 created, there was 10 times more, 132. 30 times more, 133. You don't hear them talking about that, do you? And 31 times more, iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life. 15 million. And so half-life is times 10. Just 10 half-lives. But if you could go look up the physics of it, then you find out that the half-lives actually never stop. Because you added an extra electron to a neutron bombardment to an element, and and you know like, it's like H two O two where it accepted an extra oxygen molecule, but in that case it's spring loaded, right? And that's why peroxide will off gas the extra molecules. But the nuclear chain reaction doesn't do that. It's permanent. You can't take the electron out of the the atom itself. And a single, you put two million atoms on the head of a needle, that's two million cancers distributed out. And it's like that tell the end of time. That's why we have the nuclear regulatory regulations that we allegedly have that we actually don't. But they're there, if you want to do something, they're there to stop you. But if they want to do something, it's there to cover it up. It's shocking. Like that clip I played you earlier, uh, for a week and a half, they come out and told you lies about whip. Almost like you're walking in the sunshine, like a banana. Scientists say it's no worse than natural background radiation. Japan nuclear expert, I presume melted fuel reacted violently with the cement of number three. And now so it cannibalized the cement. And then it atomized an aerosolid. And that is cancers. And a, and a gram of it produces more atoms than every grain of sand on every beach on the planet. And that's the same thing with the cement. It's not quite the same numbers. Say three grams of cement is the same amount of atoms as every grain of sand on every grain of beach on the planet, or even a pound, whatever you want to say. 
But in context, distributed out, that's enough to give everybody cancers. Everybody got a single atom. That's the problem. But it takes so long. It might not show up for 20, 30, 40 years. It might show up to, to autoimmune deficiencies, 1,800 of them, within days, weeks, months, or a year, or two years or so. 200 reactors of serious core damages, indicating there are holes in the bottoms of vessels number two and three. Now we're doing number three. It's probably all we're going to get through today is number three. We'll do number four tomorrow. And we'll move, you know, all we can do is cover it properly. We can't rush through it. And we can't say, okay, I'm going to move ahead to another subject and not finish it. And so the episodes are the episodes of telling the story. And we try to, you know, we have a curriculum to go through. But if not, we finish that curriculum the next day. Rapid meltdowns happened at number two and three, indicated by the black smoke in number three. And the black smoke in number three was the mixed oxide fuel. Uh, May the 17, 2011, TEPCO now acknowledges that a fuel full meltdown, fuel meltdown, fuel, fuel meltdown occurred at three of the plant's six reactors. But yet they're still out there lying to you. Today, in your media, in your blogs, the PR firms, it's shocking. See, we'll cover that in one of the episodes coming up of all the apologists that we identified so far. We'll probably end up doing three episodes just on that alone in the near future. And so this is a new show, and we're only going to get better each day. Melted fuel in reactor number three, and we will be doing interviews in a number of months' times. Right now we're doing a documentary, and I'll talk about that after the show. Melted fuel in reactor number three appeared to have burned through the pressure vessels, loaded with rods containing plutonium. So, and plutonium is like the worst thing possible because of the way it affects. And we know how plutonium affects people because we know from the studies by Dr. Raymond Gilmitty from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute, he done the, the studies for 35 years. He's just one of many of plutonium, 239, 238s, and their daughters, americium, neptuniums, in the beagle dogs, beagle puppies. And I'm not kidding you, beagle dogs and beagle puppies. Toxicity of inhaled plutonium dioxide in beagle dogs. I mean, this man showed us, you know, there can be no doubt. There can be no doubt of how dangerous this stuff is. You know, I keep saying that word, I know, but... Because <clears throat> I think I don't have to do everything I'm doing to make the point. I think I have to do everything I'm doing to drive that point home. And so that's why I do it that way. You got you can argue with one little facet of what I'm talking about, one little nuance of what I'm talking about, but you can't argue with every single headline after headline after headline after headline after headline after headline after headline, after headline, after headline day after day after day, week after week. Can you? See? So what the, the nuclear industry does, apologies to the, the cowards of the industry, is they'll find that something where I, I misspoke something, chop it up, and attack me on that in a blog, and the people reading it doesn't understand that they missed everything else, the other 500 headlines. I mean, we've covered over 9,000 headlines before we gave up counting. So now we're really good at organizing it into categorizing it and just creaming the crop and showing you indisputable from mainstream media all over this planet what do you want it's not me i'm telling you the story but i'm showing you the data how can i do any more i don't know how i can do any more than that i don't know how i can supply any more than that i wouldn't know where to go to find any more than what i'm doing for everybody of how I'm all, I did never expect it to be still telling this story. I suspected within months I would break the story down and everybody would become articulate and we would have debates. Instead, the industry has hired more PR firms, more magazines, more bloggers, and then the mainstream media will do and say whatever they want to say without a counter argument, without a left or a right, or far left, far right, extreme left, extreme right, nihilistic. Pol Pot, Mao, progressive, democratic, you know, it's all this, just a left and, it should be just a left and a right, and then each of them have to admit that there's a flaw. If they got a flaw in their ideology, say, okay, well, that's a flaw, I gotta get rid of that. That's not gonna help me by lying and deceiving everybody, but this is what they do. 
And they helped themselves by doing that because everybody's fighting with each other. That's not true. My politician didn't say that. No TEPCO analyst showed 94% of the nuclear fuel melted in reactor number three. 94%. Not a quick picture for you. Number three. 94%? Yeah, because the rest of it was buried under the rubble. Or blown out into the neighborhood. And plowed under the ground. The rest of it was atomized in aerosol. That's what they're saying. 94% was atomized in aerosol and went into the jet streams and came over here. Okay, we got to keep moving. we got 15 minutes. No TEPCO analyst showed 94%. Done that one, Dana. Two explosions may have occurred early on at reactor number three, very similar to Chernobyl. Chernobyl was a cakewalk. Chernobyl was a candle. Chernobyl wasn't even like, Chernobyl's not even debt. Chernobyl's debt to a forest fire. Look, that's what I, if you had a forest fire in the background and I was holding this up, you wouldn't see it. That's what Chernobyl is. Don't get me wrong, Chernobyl was horrible, over a million dead. But in comparison... You gotta watch me because that microphone is really say, uh, sensitive. I gotta get a soundboard so I can make the sound much better. But right now it's working. Two explosions may have occurred early on at reactor number three, very similar. Uh, Likely at least several hundred pounds of plutonium ejected. Ejected. Uh, <laughs> keep going. Japan's nuclear expert massive remelting occurred at reactor number three. I said three. I'm just kidding. And number three, that's my accent. Sometimes, I, like, I don't know why I say those words because that's the dialect that I normally would speak. It's, it's, and everybody knows that that's not the right way to say it, but we say that in our community. It's okay. We're, we're not going to make fun at you because you, you say something. And, and when a kid says it, it's so cute, right? I want treat. And so everybody giggles. And so it's not because we're ignorant people. It's just because we have our own little dialect. We're comfortable would not have them to be walking around with her nose up in the ear because somebody didn't say it the way I was trained in Harvard or Yale. Let me keep going. Got to watch me because I'll revert, invert, and I do at the end of the show anyway, into Dana again. And that's just my personality. Japan nuclear expert. Melt it. Now our engineer, radioactive steam continuously leaking out. It's not radioactive steam, it's radi radiation. You can call it steam because it, it went from three, four, five, six thousand 6,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures to uh, the normal ambient temperature and, and it manifests. It looks like steam, but it's not steam. You go suck that up and you're a dead man walking. You are a dead man walking. And, uh, you know, we'll cover that later in the streams here of the effects upon the people localized. Uh, next week we'll be covering Japan. Will be Japan week, so all week long will be headlines on Japan. And I tell you, I got dozies I've never gotten to, but I read once in a while myself, and I'll be going through all of that. And just mind-boggling how twisted and demented and evil and maniacally disgusting and heartless and cold-hearted these people actually are. How your governments are. I'll be covering all of that. Japan allows triple meltdown because we documented it. We got it. We got all the headlines. Japan's allows triple amount of cesium in food than Chernobyl did. Over 50% of the store-bought seafood samples contaminated with radiation. How many atoms does it take to get a cancer? One. See? How many does it take to get Alzheimer's, dementia, diabetes, respiratory problems, heart problems, liver problems, kidney problems? One. How many, does, how many atoms do you got to eat to liquidate your assets in 10, 20, 30 years. One. You're driving past a nuclear power plant and you sucked up an atom and you put two million atoms and they hit a needle and you can't see it. Does that mean it didn't exist? See? That's how that works. Because you change the property of the atom and nothing in our universe has ever encountered that atom before. That's what they call it man-made. That's why they have... Uh, nuclear waste sites, well, they're holding sites. There's no such thing as a waste site. They just keep making it and dumping it in your communities and not tell you about it. And then 20 years later, it catches fire and you got to prepare to evacuate your community and lose all your assets. How can it get any worse than what we already got done is we don't try to do anything to resolve it. 
and if we lose the entire planet. Right now we're going to lose, we lost the Pacific Ocean, we can't save the Pacific Ocean, all the herring, the sardines, the anchovies, the, you know, all the, the, the very basis of the food chain is completely gone. And I'll cover that at the end of the show. On the Ex Fukushima Expedition for Life, that's what we have been doing for the last year, uh, exploring the coastline for 260 days of Canada. And we had the documentation we were putting up at the nuclearproctologist.org. we got 10 minutes to go. Let me keep going. Plutonium uranium reactor number three, that all been blown out. This was no ordinary explosion. Let's have another quick look at number three, because that's all we're going to get today is number three, which is fine. And tomorrow will be number four and other stuff. Uh, but it's so important to tell the story and not rush through it. And so I'm not going to rush through it. I was hoping to get through it, but I, I digressed all over the place. If you want to call it that, I don't call it that because what I've done was I went out and got these pictures and the video clips and everything else because we got to jazz up the show. And as we get better, we'll be doing interviews and we'll be doing all kinds of... Um, I'll be going through the communities, going through America next year, hopefully with the documentary and the book. And that this is a lifelong ordeal for everybody and that we will deal with it rationally. So did everything blow out of this? Yeah. Did everything get spread all over the place when this one Kapowie? Yeah. Was this devastating? Yeah. So why are they telling us it's like a banana or a potato chip? Because that's what that's what they make big dollars doing. And so why shouldn't you call them out? Why shouldn't you hold them accountable? Why shouldn't somebody, anybody hold them accountable? Because everybody's in on it. If you're in mainstream media, you are a PR firm. For whatever corporation got a problem today or tomorrow, you are there to help them. That's your job. And if you're murdering people doing it, it doesn't matter. That's your job. You've got to sell whatever their message was or they'll get somebody to do it. And so the people that got the job knows exactly what they're doing and got the job so they could do it. And so if you want to know who evil is, you look at your TV set. Every news station out there, that's evil. Every newspaper out there, that's evil. Every writer in every newspaper, whether he wants to or not, is evil because he stays there and he writes the propaganda and allows the editors to manipulate it. There is no middle ground on what I said there. That's the most pathetic thing imaginable, see, that we live in that society. But we can contain that society. There's not that many of these people. They just happen to be holding those key positions. And as this planet wakes up, they're done. And good riddance. Let the night of the brown shirts begin, you know, in one sense. They got to go. Plutonium uranium reactor 3 has all been blown out. And the government is concealing the truth. There is no such thing as a government. It's a, it's a bunch of thugs that are inbreeding over and over and over and running our government. And our government is just supposed to be employees. Instead, they try to turn themselves into our leaders and our masters. And they are not leaders. They are not masters. They are cowards and they will run away from you when you confront them. They will run away from you if you question them. They will run away from you if you speak to them. They are only used to speaking to their secretaries or people in a room with a murderous plot. China Syndrome Inevitable, in, inevitable says architect of Fukushima reactor number three, warns of massive hydrovolcanic explosion and the melted fuel inevitably sank underground. November 19, 2011, China Syndrome was already going on. So he couldn't come out and say that, and he said what he said. So there you go. I think we got through it. That was... Um... So nuclear consultant Dell doubts official temperature estimates. Reactor number three, probably much nearer to thousands of degrees. Thousands. And that's important because... High iodine levels mean number three quarter spent fuel pool is starting up itself. That's J reaction. And so I think this was the hit last headline. NRC afraid the bottom of the reactor number three will break and dump everything out. First time it's mentioned the problem. I mean, my goodness. So, newly surfaced video. This was the last headline in Section 3. For some time, NRC staff has contemplated that all the reactor cores are ex-vessel. That meant they left the vessel immediately due to the time without cooling. So, when the tsunami ran through the country, when that tsunami was running through the country, 
And so let's play a little clip of that. I got a strike on my account last week for playing one of those green ones there, so I'm not touching that no more. And so this is a little tiny spot, and I'll just let that play out there, and hopefully I don't get another... So it doesn't, the video that I made a few days back, not part one of this, um, was restricted to many countries, but it was a TEPCO, it was a Japanese video of a tsunami. And so I'm not, it's restricted in Japan. So a tsunami video, one of my last videos, because it was owned by a company in Japan, it's not allowed to be played in Japan. You can't make that stuff up, see? So as this tsunami comes through the community, what does it do? For 500 miles, what's it doing? For 500 miles, it's taking out the entire infrastructure. So how could they get power when this thing came through? How could they get power when this was taking out all the buildings and telephone poles and all the lines for 500 miles? How could you not have meltdowns? How could you not have... Because you need a million gallons a minute of, of water to cool down the reactor. And so it doesn't take only a few minutes for it to start to get out of control. After 90 minutes, it's starting to melt down. Once it starts to melt down, there is no way to control it. Right? And so as these tsunamis ravage the entire country, every nuclear plant uh, is on the ocean, 90% of them or whatever, and so they were all destroyed. That's why they're not starting any nuclear plants out on the coastline. They're starting the ones up high in the mountains, right? Up in the hills. But they're not going to do the ones, the ones alongside the ocean because they were wrecked. But they're not going to tell you about that. And we covered a lot of that yesterday. But you can imagine 500 miles of coastline getting pummeled. Yeah? Does that make any sense to you now? Okay. And so let's go cover some more headlines because otherwise we'll never get rid of that. We'll never get through all of that stuff. And so now we're going to go in and talk about other. So I'll pick up here and I'll just run through these for the next five minutes. We got three minutes. Okay, I'll just do five or six of these and then we'll come over. And that's the end of the show. And we'll do a, a half an hour, hopefully, of chatting. And I'll say good night to everybody. Good day to everybody in the chat room. At that beautiful girl by Dana on YouTube. If you go to the front of my page and click uploads. So if you come over to, um, just to make sure you can find this stream if you're just showing up the next time. You got a beautiful girl by Dana on YouTube, one word. And you go to my uploads and you click live streams. And usually 10 hours now or so before the next stream will show up as the very first one here. Right now, this is the live stream we're looking at right now. And... That's how you find the live streams. It's 10 a.m. Pacific Canada time, British Columbia Canada time, 10 a.m. each morning, five days a week. And I'll be and now today I'll be uploading. Starting today I'll be uploading more pictures at the nuclearproctologist.org. And you come over to section two. That's where all the last expedition section one is the first four expeditions. Plus there's all kinds of uh, documentation headlines about Fukushima in context of jet streams, oceans, Canada, California. And section two is a new section. And as you scroll down, these are the recent pictures from a six week expedition that I took down the coastline of Canada. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll play a 30 second trailer before the show ends of the Fukushima expedition for life. And this is us, Dana, and myself actually out there on the ocean. And I'm in the Queen Charlotte's uh, several months ago in this particular little trailer. And that trip was five months long. So let me come over and look for any questions. It's moving pretty fast here. Hi, Brian. Ellie. Zig Free. Bob. Miss Milky. YouTube took my thumbs up, she says, but always allows me to thumb down anything. Go figure. That's Jan Brooks at uh, Miss Milky the Clown 1. You'll find links below. And she's a voracious appetite for media reports about Fukushima. 
and she'll put up both sides, even the bad stuff, because how else we're going to find it, of the arguments. And so it's a really good site. It's been around for quite a long time. She's probably one of the first people out there on it, most likely. And Miss Milky the Clown 1 is her current site. Miss Milky the Clown is her original site. And there's thousands of mainstream media videos there about it. So if you're a researcher or you're trying to find out information that you're looking for in particular, that's a pretty good spot to go start searching. And Chuck, Albert, uh, 9 Bob, uh, Nuts for Art. And that's uh, Lonnie. Lonnie's got a radio show. She's, I'll be on her show next week, or I think it is. And we got Ain't Gesture. Hey, buddy. And Brian, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Chuck. Thank you. And so we're just looking for any comments or any kind of anything that anybody want me to mention. As usual, because I cover it in such big details, and this is a new part of, and this is a new uh, program that we're doing here. It's taking. A, it's going to take a while for people to really. Because usually at the end of the show, the show is gone and so am I. But now we got the chat room is open for half an hour uh, if we get any questions. Yeah, Miss Milky got over 2,000 videos. And thank you, everybody. No Zoe on water ski clips. Just dirt. Did you keep any kind of journal or log on the journey other than photo log? Yeah, I've done a video log. Of the whole journey. I just turned the video camera on and yammered along. And so hard to do anything on the ocean. you got to realize how difficult it was just to do what I was doing every day. I did intend to keep a journal. And the only way I was able to do it was video journal. Which is fine. Because you got the video camera. You're saying, look, 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 look. Hey, this is what I'm talking about. So instead of writing it down, I'll type it out. And the intentions was I can type it all out later for the book and for the documentary, right? But I did use high quality at the same time, just in case. And Kate, hi Kate, hugs honey, thank you. These shows are, you're liking that, that's good. And Kate's got the Fukushima Hounds over there, you'll find links right away below my video about that. Um, Douglas, Cotton Top, that's Mickey, folks. Uh, let me see if I find anybody else. Yeah, Naptel, thank you. And Elaine is out there. I know I seen her earlier. Um, Candace was out there. Amthurst. <coughs> I got a really bad throat. It's a bit better because I'm not yelling all the time. And so anybody... Good question. Ellie asked the question, what did you eat while on the boat, Dana? I ate mostly raw vegetables, uncooked. I never, of course, ate anything out of the ocean. And I wouldn't eat anything out of the Pacific Ocean. I'm going to eat any fish. It'll be out of the Atlantic. And even then, uh, I'm probably not going to eat it. I don't trust, uh, not trust, it's just that I happen to know I pay attention. I see the model above me is just two radioactive elements of the 2,000 that we know about. There's over 10,000 that are classified. Fix it. Neff killer. So. So Ziffrey says, for those who are not familiar with number two, please explain why that building is still in one piece. Yeah, if I could do that, I'd be laughing. Well. The meltdown was so fast it went straight down into the earth. Like it did blow up. But we don't know because we can't get in there. So I can't say 100%. But I always assumed that the meltdown was so fast and so complete. And that they did, it blew the vents out the side of it. You can't see it there. But the building stayed intact. But that was the only building that stayed intact. But we know the documentation shows it melted and left the building. And we know how hot this stuff gets. And we know they were using plutonium in all the reactors. We know plutonium will reach... Uh, you know, eight, nine thousand degree Fahrenheit temperatures in no time at all. And we know that plutonium rather burns up 200,000 times hotter than the uranium. And so, some, you know, one of these had to do that anyway, where it just took off and went down into the earth 
and done that thing. Starlight! And Starlight got an awesome video that I've never seen for a long time. Then I finally seen it. And it's just so talented. Uh, video maker is amazing. And probably one of the first real videos that Starlight sat there and tried to make, but just fantastic uh, work. Uh, Adam, you're... Yeah, I think the daytime shows are a good way to reach people. That's And so, like, on the East Coast, is not late in the day. On the West Coast, or in America, is not late. So we're on the same kind of time schedules. And so Europe is a good time, countries and stuff like that. The English-speaking countries, for the most part, is a good time to catch people. And so as time boys goes by, you know, we'll, we'll build up this audience again because we just spent 260 days on the ocean at a 365. This is only my second show. And so the expeditions are all over. I'll be uploading pictures for the next month and a half, two months, minimum probably, at uh, the nuclearproctologist.org. And anybody's not familiar with that, once again, I'll just pop that up for a quick boo for everybody. And so at the bottom, of it, there's 200 pictures on each page. And at the bottom of each page, there's a couple of hundred headlines. And they really tell the story. And so any of the pictures, any of the headlines, just click on anything. And then left or right of it in the black. You don't have to be on the arrow. You can be up above the arrow and click, and it'll change headlines. You can be right alongside of it and click either side of it or the arrows, right? And you can, you can close it down and scroll down. There's pictures there you can kind of look at. And that's number four. Uh, and just a good collection for yourself, a good way to help you slow down and understand that. These pictures are inside of Unit 4. That's the Fukushima 50. You've got to give them a few moments sometimes to clean up. Sometimes they're not that high of quality. But that, that's the original pictures from TEPCO's website. You can download them under my video. You can download them from my site, the nuclearproctologist.org. There's a couple of thousand pictures up there in Section 1. You can find all of that. Dana, Unit 3 looks like a nuke went off. And you have a picture of the lid reactor. That's uh, Cotton, uh, Mickey. Yeah, okay. It is saying laying closed. Yeah, that's right. Dude. No, the whole... Yeah, and I showed those pictures, actually, I do believe. Scramble tank. And anybody else... Bleeding heart, root for a sore throat, Chuck says. Every 22 days, I guess you're talking about going around the world. Yeah. Raw honey, I got, yeah, I went and got some raw honey yesterday, actually. I got a big container, but this big. That'll get me through a couple of months. And that's what I'm doing right now, actually. So, Saint, yeah, we covered that one, Jester, St. Louis Underground. And that's a disaster. In fact, they actually have a evacuation plan now that they unsealed. And they had that plan for decades. Because they knew someday that the fire or there would be an event and that the nuclear waste site buried underground would become a problem. They would have to evacuate the community. So now they unsealed it. Yeah, so we're, we're dealing with a maniacal industry that hides it away. And when it happens, blames everybody or terrorists or anybody rather than admit that they made a mistake. Okay, well, I guess we're doing okay. We'll call it quits. Yeah. Radical home goddess. Hi, honey. Thank you. Hugs for your loved ones. I know your husband's probably working right now, but hugs for him when he comes home. Look, um... The ocean is dead. Pacific Ocean is dead. There's no scientists out there I would put any fate in anymore. There's no journalists out there I would put my fate into. Only the documentation. And the documentation of the entire Pacific Ocean of the British Columbia Canada coastline, from one end of the coastline, from Alaska all the way down to the other end of the coastline, 15,000 miles in between it, is all right here. Dead ocean. And at the bottom of it, uh, throughout this whole site, there's all kinds of headlines on the Pacific Ocean, on the jet streams, on the ocean contamination, of the mass mortalities events in chronological order a lot of the times. And so the fact that they're even talking about the ocean dying means they're going to try to cover it up and blame it on tin cans and pop bottles and cardboard. 
And so the beer out here, I'll end it on this one. The beer, the beer's out here. There's no snow left in our mountains because of the tritium. And we've never thought we'd ever see that in a billion years. But there's no snow in any of the mountains. And British Columbia, Canada has snow all year long. And there's no fish. There's no meat. It's been a total failure. And no berries. And so the beers are eating apples. And what do you think they're going to eat after they eat the apples? They're eating garbage cans in the communities. Because there ain't no fish. There ain't no meat in their, in their uh, scat, the beer scat. And uh, now, now we're really going to see desperation. And these are powerful animals. We had someone attacked her a few weeks ago by a beer. Over 50 beer sightings in the last couple of weeks in just one little area. Everybody's garbage can has been destroyed in that whole area. Everybody's garbage cans. And the beers are surviving on apples because there's nothing else out there. We're looking at an extinction event. It's just one of the many, many, many signs. Thomas Ackerman, Rattle Shark, Miss Milky, Fix It, and everybody else. Nuts for her. Chuck her. Where's Kitten? Hi, Jamie. Carly Moore. We say Lee out in Siam and Jester, L.A. And that's all we got today. And so that's a good live stream. That's uh, episode one. And the idea is, as we get through these episodes, anybody that's trying to find out will go to pilot episode one, two, three, four, five, and six. And by then, they'll be extremely articulate. And no one's going to pull the wool over their eyes. And that they'll be better people and better prepared and more able and more and more humbled and more honest in their everyday life because they understand that life is extraordinarily precious. And that all together, us, just as that beginning, will prove that it, that we are doing a moral and ethical thing and that the people that are out there that are unethical and without morals will be held accountable uh, even in a descending voice. So hugs for everybody. Once again, I'm Dana Durford. You can find the documentation at the nuclearproctologist.org and you'll find all my videos at Beautiful Girl Boy Dana on YouTube. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is the 14th and we'll be doing Unit 4 and other pertinent issues that we didn't cover today. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks.